Okay, in this video I am going to show you how to make sourdough starter. This is a sourdough starter and as you can see there's a scrunchie there about halfway down or even further down. Before I went to bed last night the sourdough starter in this jar was up to the scrunchie and it's six o'clock in the morning now before I went to bed I fed the starter and when I fed it the starter was up at the scrunchie and now you'll see that it's actually doubled in size okay so we'll have a look at that so when I went to bed last night the starter was down here and that's where I fed it to or I fed it up to that point and from overnight then it's gone from there up to here and over doubled in size you see the little bubbles there as well the little holes they are indicative of a lively starter we'll have a look at it there so the key to successful baking to successful sourdough bread baking is the starter that's the absolute key because the job of the starter is to raise the dough mix that you're going to have and raise it in the fermentation process, raise it in the proofing process and raise it then when it is put into the oven because you're going to get a good bit of oven spring and oven spring leaves a lovely big loaf of sourdough bread. So if the key is the sourdough starter then how do you make sourdough starter this is coffee jar it's a little coffee jar there's big jars as well you can get there's honey jars there is little jars that you might get peanut butter in there's all sorts of little receptacles a jam jar and anything at all is going to be useful for the building of your sourdough starter your sourdough starter is absolutely key to the success of sourdough bread so that's why it needs to be alive it needs to be lively it needs to be bubbly and it really needs to double in size just before you bake to do that we are going to put flour and water into this and we're going to mix it up and we're going to leave it and we're going to be doing that for about a week maybe five days Will be enough maybe it'll need six days maybe it'll need seven days in the first instance i'm going to put in 25 grams of white strong white flour 25 grams of rye flour and 50 grams of water so you're going to have 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water i'm going to mix it up i'm going to put the lid on the jar and i'm going to leave it for 24 hours and then I'm going to do the same again, but I'll show you that as we go along during the week because I'm going to shoot this video over the course of the number of days it takes to make the starter. I can't emphasize enough that the success of your sourdough bread is going to come down to the starter. I've had plenty of really good breads with great oven spring, great bounce. I've had plenty of disasters bread that came out of the oven like a frisbee and the reason for that is the starter wasn't alive it was dead and it did nothing for the bread in the oven it did nothing for the mix remember sourdough bread like most breads is a mixture of simply flour water salt and some sort of a raising agent with the ordinary yeasted bread the raising agent will be yeast that you might buy in a packet in the supermarket in Tesco or SuperValue or wherever and in relation to sourdough bread you're not going to use a packet of yeast you're going to use this lad sourdough starter to start it so we've an empty jar there we're going to look after that we're going to start our starter now and as I say it could take five six seven days but we'll do that over the course and in the meantime I'm going to use this now to bake my bread on Saturday morning and the reason for that is it's ready to go, it's doubled in size, it's active, it's bubbly and it's ready to do its job and its job is, you've only got one job and that is to raise the bread. 
the mix that we do we will prepare so we're going to put 25 grams of strong white 25 grams of rye flour and uh, 50 grams of water into this this is the rye flour that i have i get it on amazon buy it from unfortunately i get it from the uk So this is the rye flour that I'm going to use and I get this on Amazon. Um, I only buy it once every six months or so because it does me that length of time. I get a, a good uh, quantity of it at a time. And then I use the strong white flour, ordinary strong white flour that I get in any shop in Ireland from Ordrums. So 25 grams of each. This weighs 50 and 50. This weighs 100 grams now. So 50 grams of water, 50 grams of flour, 25 grams of strong white, 25 grams of rye. You don't need rye flour. You could use all strong white or you could use 25 grams of strong white and 25 grams of wholemeal. The key, not the key, but you should have the same amount of water as the same amount of flour. So if you use 50 grams of water, or say 50 grams of flour then use 50 grams of water but as I say the flour you use could be strong white it could be rye it could be wholemeal I find that the rye is very very good very active very quickly and the strong white is very good the wholemeal less so um, but it, you can still use it and I still use it and have to use the wholemeal in this one so we're going to mix this up now put the lid on and leave it for 24 hours and then we're going to come back and do something similar again we're going to empty it out uh, most of it out and just put in 25 grams of strong white 25 grams of rye and 50 grams of water mix it up again we're going to do that for five six seven days if necessary until we see it's active and bubbly and when it is we're going to see it then rising from the scrunchy up the jar when that happens then we have a lively uh, starter that's ready to go to war ready to do the job it's intended to do I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to leave it over by the windowsill uh, where it's going to get some sunshine and today is supposed to be a warm day. The temperature of your kitchen, the temperature of wherever you're trying to make your bread is a very important factor as well because the temperature, uh, the higher the temperature, the more quickly the starter will come to life and the more quickly your bread will ferment and proof. If it's cold, it's a slower job. So I'd always leave it over in the window there where it's going to get some sunshine. Okay, it's day two in how to make sourdough starter. So this is the jar from yesterday. Yesterday I put 25 grams of rye flour into it, 25 grams of strong white and 50 grams of water. I mixed it up and left it on the windowsill over there beside the sink. Today I'm gonna to do precisely the same thing. I'm gonna empty out this. I'm gonna leave scrapings in the jar, just scrapings. And then I'm gonna put 25 grams of strong white 25 grams of rye flour and 50 grams of water. I'm going to stir it up, leave it on the windowsill over there by the sink again, day two. Okay, so it's day three of how to make a sourdough starter. It's the same time as the other two days. Generally, I try and be as consistent as possible in terms of dealing with the starter. 
so it's uh, half five in the morning I'm going to work shortly but before I go this is the same time as I say day one and day two bottom line is here's the starter and I'll show it to you now we're going to see a little bit of activity the activity I'm referring to now is these bubbles these bubbles are important. The light over here is better. You see now, right there. So there's bubbles there. We're beginning to see signs of life. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for signs of life. Those bubbles are the gases being passed off or being cast off by the activity of the bacteria. And those bubbles are a good sign. If we take the lid off now and have a look at the top. You'll see the top there of the sourdough starter is actually beginning to rise a little bit. It's becoming convex as opposed to concave. All that means is we're on the right track and I'm going to take, throw this out and I'm going to and leave the scrapings in the jar and then I'm going to put in 25 grams of strong white, 25 grams of rye flour, 50 grams of water, mix it up and again leave it on the windowsill leave it on the windowsill over there and it'll get the sun, it'll get the heat during the day and then I'll have a look again tomorrow morning but we're beginning to show signs of life so this starter will be ready to go into action soon and as I say what we're looking for is those bubbles you can see the bubbles there and that's a sign of life so we're gonna do what we've done each of the other two days and today is day three it's half five in the morning and I'll be going to work shortly now, but I'm going to throw this out, I'm going to leave scrapings in the jar and I'm going to put in 25 grams of strong white, 25 grams of rye and I'll have a look at it this evening, but again I'll probably do the same thing again tomorrow morning we'll have a look and see how it's going on One thing to note is I use the scrunchie on the jar to indicate the height of the, of the mix What I'm looking for eventually is for the mix the starter to puff up and increase in size and basically rise up above the scrunchie but it's a good indication of what you're looking for because it gives you a visual representation of success essentially and when the starter is ready to go you don't need to use a scrunchie you can use a rubber band either or you could put some marking on the jar but a scrunchie or a rubber band is just handy to give you an indication so you're watching for that ultimately to increase in size from the height of the scrunchie up the jar and sometimes I've had starters actually blown the lid off the jar which is obviously very good and means your starter is ready to go okay it's day four how to build how to make a sourdough starter and today with our existing starter I'm going to take 30 grams of that starter put it into a clean fresh container I'm going to throw out the rest of it 30 grams into this and then I'm going to put in 70 grams of strong white 40 grams of rye flour and 30 grams of wholemeal flour and today is day four so we want 30 grams of starter or existing starter into a fresh glass. I'm going to turn on the turn on the scales first. Unless I'm going to be eyeballing it. Okay, that's 30 grams of our starter that we've been working on. I'm going to throw that out. I'm going to get a fresh um, spoon now. 70 grams of strong white. 40 grams of rye flour. And 30 grams of wholemeal. It's the first time I'm putting wholemeal into the starter, alright? 30 grams, so 70, 40 and 30. So 
70, 40 and 30 gives us 140 grams of flour. So we need to put in 140 grams of water. And then we're going to mix it all up with a, with a fork, actually, the fork is handy. Yeah. Okay, we're going to put the lid on and we're going to take the scrunchie from this jar and we're going to put it in this jar and we're going to put the scrunchie at the level of the starter, at the height of the starter and then we're going to leave it over here in the windowsill. Leave the starter there on the windowsill for the day and we'll have a look at it then this evening when we come home from work. Tomorrow morning it should be in pretty good shape but let's hope let's hope so um that's day four the whole idea the whole prize at the end of making a sourdough starter is to be able to be able to make sourdough bread good sourdough bread that rises up pretty well and this is a fairly good example of it here that's a sourdough loaf that i made at the weekend and that's obviously we'll do for lunches Okay, it's day five of how to make a sourdough starter. So this is our starter. It is showing signs, some signs of life, but not enough yet, not enough to bake because it hasn't moved up past the scrunchie. There is some bubbles there and the bubbles are a good sign. The bubbles are an indication that it is beginning to come to life as it were, but as I say, not sufficiently. So today, I'm going to do exactly what I did yesterday. I'm going to throw out all of the starter, but I'm going to save 30 grams. So I'm going to keep 30 grams, then I'm going to put in 70 grams of strong white, 40 grams of rye flour, and 30 grams of wholemeal flour. That's 140 grams of flour. So I'm going to put in 140 grams of water, mix it up, and leave it on the windowsill over there. So. And just in terms of seeing signs of life with the starter, if we have a look here, I'll show you now. Um, you can see some bubbles there. These bubbles are an indication of it's beginning to come come to, to life, but it's not re yet ready to bake. Uh, there's another big bubble in there. So it is showing signs of life, but as I say, not enough, not sufficient, and we need it to be moving up past the scrunchie in order to be strong enough and active enough to rise bread. So I'm going to throw this out, but I'm going to save 30 grams in the same jar, 70 grams of strong oil, 40 grams of rye flour, 30 grams of wholemeal and 150 or 140 grams of water and stir it up. Um, day five, I think it's day five, I'm not 100 percent actually. Anyway, when I came home from work yesterday evening, the lid had been pushed off the starter with, due to the pressure, the build up of pressure inside. And as you can see, there's been a good increase in the size of the starter. So you'll see there, yesterday morning, the starter was up to the scrunchie and today it's gone up further. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give it one more feed this morning I'm going to throw out what I have, except I'm going to keep 30 grams of this starter. I'm going to put in 70 grams of strong white, 40 grams of rye flour, and 30 grams of wholemeal flour. And then this evening, when I come home, I expect to see it increased in size even more than this, and I'll be using it at that stage. So that's the plan to use it this evening. So I'm going to throw this out, except I'm going to save 30 grams of this starter and put in 70 grams of strong white, 40 grams of rye flour, 30 grams of wholemeal flour. That's 140 grams of flour. So I'm gonna put in 140 grams of water, stir it up, and I'm gonna leave it uh, in, in an area that's sunny, that's gonna get the sun during the day and get a bit of heat because heat and sun is important as well, especially heat. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a look at it and uh, I'm hoping that it'll be increased yeah, to an even greater extent than this one and I'll be using it at that stage and I'm going to use it on baked bread this evening.
leave it there now where it's going to get the sun during the day. So it's going to get a good bit of sun and the sun is useful, very, very useful, sun and heat. And then I'll check this evening when I come home for more of what it's like. But I would be expecting a fair old increase in the size of it and I'd be expecting them to be able to bake with it hopefully this evening. Okay, it's about a quarter to five in the evening now. I'm just home from work and I want to see how my starter has done. So I'm expecting it to have increased in size significantly and obviously I'm hoping that it has increased in size significantly and obviously hoping that it'll be ready to use for baking because we actually need some bread. So let's go and have a look. So that is obviously very, very good. It blew the top off the lid, or the lid off, you can see there that it's actually practically live. So that is a tremendously vigorous live starter, and that's ready for, that's ready for uh, action. And when I say action, I'm talking about, I'm talking about putting it into action in baking. But obviously, you can see it there, I better get it out. Or be in trouble with herself but that is seriously seriously vigorous seriously vigorous um, sourdough starter and that's what we've been after all the time that's ready to go there now it's ready to rock it's risen right up the risen right up the jar right up and it's risen up so much that it's overflowing and making it made a mess inside in the living room. So I'll have to go in and clean that up now. But in the meantime, before I go for my run, I want to put this into action and I'm going to bake with it. And I'll show you the outcome then of the bread when it's baked. But it'll probably be a couple of days because I'm still I'm not on the weekend rota at the moment. I'm working, so the timing is the thing. I'm going to have to mix it up now knead it, leave it for five hours, stick it in the fridge and then bake it probably tomorrow evening when I come home from work which will be Friday evening. But that's how you make a sourdough starter, that's what you want, you want the... and you can see the scrunchie there, just to be clear, you can see the scrunchie, I'll just change this. You see where the scrunchie is and this is where the height of the uh, starter was this morning before I went to work and now when I come home it's actually uh, overflowing to the point where it's actually made a mess inside in the living room which I'm going to have to uh, take care of so here's the evidence that it actually overflowed um, overflowed the jar during the day and the heat and the light there from that window is a big factor as well you know so I'm going to have to make that now that's how you make a sourdough starter <laughs> 